What's going on guys? VPP back with another Game Case RK's video. Of course, it's complete. Rob's control panel is officially back to life. So obviously we got Rob's control panel back to life from the dead. Um, his original Raspberry Pi that he did have in it was officially dead. Ordered a new one on Amazon, Amazon Prime obviously coming in clutch with the two day shipping. So we got brand new Raspberry Pi. We have our two wireless PS3 controllers. It read the brand new SD card. And as you can see, we are officially up and running. So let me take you guys a little bit of a closer look. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of a promo video because it's been a while for a promo video for a control panel, which you'll see in a different video. But let's get out of selfie mode because you guys don't like selfie mode. Let's take a closer look. So we are in mission control right here using one of my monitors as basically the test bench for this control panel. So let's take a look real quick at the control panel. Again, all wired up, rewired and everything. No mess at all like before. We got it all nice and cleaned up. We have our brand new Raspberry Pi mounted, screwed into the deck here, along with our Zinmo controller. So everything right now is in perfect working order. Just as far as real quick, what I did for Rob on this one, I basically put the inserts in just to help him kind of recognize what each button does. So you got your player one coin and start. You got a shift button, load button, which it's kind of hard to see in the white. There we go save button exit button and then again start and coin so little details like that will help his original thing basically just had nothing on it so figured i help him out get some clarity as far as what these buttons do um as far as right now quick rundown on the setup this is what your control panel could look like or a pedestal so you literally have a two-player control panel with an hdmi cable going to a tv this right here is a 49 inch tv Again, on this one, we have a control panel. Um, we also did the four player mod. So there are two wireless PS3 controllers, little tiny mishap with these right now, but I got new ones coming in. The blue controller did not work wirelessly, but basically I'm just gonna grab a new set. So black one works, but the blue one does not. I'll still show off some four player gameplay. So again, two arcade sticks, two PS3 controllers makes this a four player setup. This does play two on two open ice. Uh, it's basically your NBA jam, but with hockey. So once I press the player one button, we will let this load up. Keep in mind some ROMs like this one, for example, has low volume. Um, it's not really great emulated on the Raspberry Pi, but it works. Um, but again, there are ROMs in games like this where you could change it from four players to two players. So this game right here, along with NBA jam, is set to four player. Keep in mind with players one and two, these guys are on the same team. Players three and four is on the other team. So sometimes people get the control panels and they wanna play like 1v1, where basically you're versing each other against the arcade sticks. In this ROM particular for four players, as you can see, this is player one here. You can see right here. If I do player two start, it's here. So basically the arcade stick is team one, PlayStation controllers is team two. So again, you could do four players with this. I'm gonna insert my coins and I'll basically be able to press start. My PlayStation controller is off. After about five minutes of not being used, it'll turn off. So you just kind of bring it up to life and now it's good to go. So you don't have to worry about exiting it and all that. Um, so again, just keep that in mind. As you can see right now, this game, is gonna be utilizing basically players one and two on the arcade sticks, players three and four on the PlayStation 3 controllers. So again, right now we got all four players active. So if I do player one, you can see that player two joystick is right there. So again, basically the one team is on the arcade sticks. Some people not, might not like that or some people just don't want four players, they want two players. I've done a video in the past, but I'll show you real quick. You will need a keyboard to do this. Basically, you press tab on your keyboard. It will bring up this kind of menu right here. With your arrow keys, you're gonna go down and go to dip switches, press enter on the keyboard, and you're basically gonna change cabinet from four player 
to two player using your arrow key. So again, just using my regular keyboard, you could even see my player one is kind of going crazy, but that's how you basically would change it. So you go to two player and then you would just reboot the game and it would just basically think it's a two player cabinet. So again, there are four player games on this. You could always change it up. Basically utilizing the admin controls here, you have your shift, which basically you have to hold down for these other three buttons to work. It's kind of like a fail safe. So right now I'm pressing exit, nothing is happening. For me to exit, I have to hold shift, press exit. And now we've exited out. Just for Rob real quick, again, as far as your control panel here, button one is enter, button two is back, button three is previous letter, and then button six is next letter, and then button five is random game. So if you press button five, it'll just jump to a random game. So if you ever wanna just explore different games, you could do that. Right now, we always gotta do it. I did it on Instagram. We have to load up Street Fighter and get a one-handed Hadouken. So right now, we are in G, I'm gonna use button six to basically skip our letters. And right here, you could see the game title. So pressing button six, we're gonna go down to Street Fighter. You could do Super Street Fighter to get there quickly. Or if you want, you could do regular Street Fighter. So for example, we are on S, now using the joystick, holding it down, and basically just give it a few minutes, not a few minutes, a few seconds. And basically, once you see Street Fighter, you're just gonna stop on it. So again, the Street Fighter Champion Edition, World Warrior. Uh, I usually do Champion Edition. So let's just let that go. Again, as you can see, T. So we're on the Star Wars. And now we're on the Street Fighter 2. Again, I always do Champion Edition, Button 1, and that lets you in. Again, I've made videos in the past as far as how to navigate the screens. It's pretty easy. It's not that difficult. 16 by nine stretch. I do it all the time, full screen stretch. Putting our coins in. I always do player one start alone. Player two start, just to make sure our start buttons work. Button one, button one. Now remember, you always use Street Fighter to test out your buttons to make sure all six buttons and the joysticks work. So I could go right, I could go left. Let's just see real quick. That is a one-handed Hadouken right there. Again, that seals the deal. This control panel is set. <laughs> I have to do that at the end of the video, but I always do that as my main thing. So again, using Street Fighter, you're gonna make sure that all six buttons initiate a different punch, kick, and again, you wanna just make sure your joysticks work. As far as your admin buttons, again, you have your load and your save button. So basically right now, Let's say we were playing, it's time to eat. You hold down shift and you press save. It literally will take a little bit of a snapshot of exactly where you are. So check this out. I could beat you up. If I want to now return, hold shift, press load, and it literally brings us right back to where we saved. It's a very cool feature and I always use it. Again, we're done playing, hold shift, press exit, and you are set. As far as checking it out in kind of night mode, again, LED buttons on this. I did not make the control panel, meaning he basically already made it. I just fixed it up and cleaned it up. Big thing I always stress, and I can't stress it enough, you never wanna just unplug these systems. You always wanna shut it down properly. So Rob, again, big thing is, you're gonna kinda of get into this menu here. So let's just say real quick, you were playing a game and you exit it out of the game, you get here, you're done playing, what do you do? Basically, you're gonna keep pressing button two until it brings you back to this. When you see this exit attract mode, you're gonna go up, button one to press yes, and that is it. Once you see this Raspberry Pi logo, you are basically A-OK -okay to flip the switch. And that is all. So now a big feature as far as all the images I do, this is running a track mode. After 30 seconds of no touching the control panel, the system will go into a track mode, basically showcasing different games and showing off different games and systems. So as you can see right now, just went into a track mode. It's really cool, like if you have an actual arcade cabinet or even a setup like this, you could basically just leave the system running. 
it'll just show off different games going on in this wheel. Right now we are on the man wheel, so it's gonna basically just show all the games within that wheel. If I go to the NES or the Super NES, it'll showcase the games inside of that. When you are ready to play with it, you could just hit any button or just tap the joystick and you're back. Right now we're gonna go back, so I'm gonna press button two. We're in a subcategory, I'm gonna press back again. Now you're in your main category, so you could go down, like we could do consoles, pressing button one, you press enter, and let's go down to the NES, button one on the NES. And now again, if you leave the system alone for 30 seconds, it will basically cycle through 886 games. So again, definitely a very cool feature as far as a track mode and the Raspberry Pi. While we wait for that, basically the only thing you have to really keep in mind with this, you do have your power cord here and then on the right here, I'm gonna have one on the right and one on the left. This is basically the charging cable for the PlayStation controllers. So we'll just have that on the backs. Nothing in the front. Again, it's pretty clean. This right here is for my laptop, so you're not gonna see that. But again, after 30 seconds, as you can see, went into a track mode it shows off the game that it's showing all it shows the title of the game currently and again it's definitely a cool way to learn new games there you guys have it rob buddy your control panel's all set should be ready by monday just gotta wait for the new playstation controls to come in because like i said one of them is not working wirelessly so easy swap but as of right now 99 percent done vic vp game case arcades <laughs>